<laughs> ah, bonjour. Welcome to a new edition of the Guidebook of the Week series, where today we will explore training quizzes and training records. So uh, this week we are going to look at an example for a training kind of documentation. I know Spiro made one quite similar at the end here with the lockout tagle uh, example, but this one will solely focus on a uh, training guidebook. Uh, and it's a guidebook that operators can go through, not being like directly on the shop floor, but they can do that at their desk if they want. If you hire a new employee, maybe there's like a, a mock-up station or computer they can go through and just go um, open up different training documentation, uh, look at how things work at, a, at that specific company. And at the end, uh, you could have like a quiz, some kind of questionnaires where uh, the operator will um, have to answer certain questions and can only finish if every one of those questions have been answered right. So you make sure that uh, if you see the report that this training documentation was completed by this person, uh, then it means that uh, he learned everything properly, uh, essentially. Uh, and the first example I will show you, um, let's go into this right here. Uh, it's a training on like hazardous materials and little logos and all, all things like that. And at the end, there's the quiz I was talking about. If you want, you can implement quizzes throughout your, your documentation, of course. Um, you can build a guidebook that is more on like compliance training, or maybe you can build one not necessarily for um, like your operators, but it could be something on cybersecurity where um, you explain different concepts of not answering and opening weird links in emails. Um, and throughout, again, the guidebook, you have those meaty questions that only let you go through uh, if they're answered properly. All right, so let's dive in this one here. Um, I'm going to go quick uh, on that example because the, the content is not necessarily um, useful to show. It's mostly the, the concept around it. Um, all right. So first step, it explains sort of what it, what it is. And you go through, see different signs. Uh, and I believe this training is used at our sister company, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So CMP. <laughs> What you see now, okay, symbol that you've seen in a movie, a game, explanation mark, objectives. I'm just gonna go through real quick so you see the types of annotations that are put here. As you can see, the steps are not a picture. Um, it's instead like a, a blank background, and then it's a collage of different uh, images, which you can also do in VGS. Not everything has to be uh, an image. And if you're doing training on how to use like a certain software, maybe, uh, then your steps could just be screenshots of that software, of course. Uh, what is a hazardous substance? Let's again go through real quick. I think, yeah, I believe there's some videos in here, so of course you can uh, include those in your uh, um, in, in your example. All right, enough enough of this. Let's move on. Uh, okay, if you see me, I'm just going to skip to the end. Skip all the videos. I think you get the idea here. We have a form right before the final quiz asking us if we want to review certain sections. And there's some rules uh, in this form. So if I want to review the labeled section, I select this, click save, sends me back. I can review it again. Go through at the end, start the exam, hit save, and then I have my quiz asking me different questions. So what does the acronym stands for? I'm just going to pick some stuff here so you can use those list boxes if you have lots of questions. Uh, alternatively, if you only have like one, two, three choices, you can use those radio buttons. Uh, here, they also use the, the radio button for that question. Uh, again, what are the two major groups? List boxes, check boxes you could use as well. Asking to enter a number um, might be a bit harder to do in the quiz. Uh, you're better to stick with simple things. As you can see, you can add pictures directly in your forms. There's a little trick uh, you can do to do this. You can ask your customer support representative to help you with that if you're if you're interested. Otherwise, of course, the pictures could be in the background and you can sort of move the form away to see um, to see what's in it. Or you can just uh, minimize it to see it properly. Okay. So you answer some stuff and I'm just gonna pick things here. I might get everything right. I'm just taking randomly, probably not. I hit save. And no, I failed the quiz. There's something wrong and I know exactly what it is. You could add some rules so it really tells you which questions were wrong. 
uh, but better just say something was wrong okay send you back at the beginning do the training again and while you don't finish the quiz properly um, the sort of operation the job will always be in progress it will never be actually completed uh, which means that if you are like a training manager or supervisor or team leader whatever um, you can at any point in time see as I mentioned in the beginning if all your employees uh, finished properly the different trainings by going in the report section so we're used to use the report section for traceability, uh, but it can be used uh, not for like production traceability, but training traceability as well. So let's dive in. I'm gonna go in reports. And then what I can do here is I can do a certain search. So like, okay, I wanna see every time somebody uh, went through this training and I can use the guidebook number I can type the guidebook name I can search in a folder hit search and I'm gonna get all the results here so obviously I did a couple of those as examples but here you would see really the list of all the employees that went through it you would see if it's in progress or completed so we can see nobody completed the training uh, completely um, but obviously you would see if, if they did it um, yeah you can export everything to Excel um, compile the information if you want. You want to look at what happened during the training. You can just view it simply. I will open up the report. You're going to get information on, again, the name of the training documentation, how long the person spent in it, and everything that happened. So if the user filled um, a, a form, uh, not this one, but maybe this one, and there's something wrong and it sends them back again and they do the quiz again, there's something wrong, it sends them back again, you will see every copy uh, of all the forms that they saved. So you will know how many times they, they failed uh, and you will see if they actually completed because anyway, it's going to say complete. Uh, so yeah, you can use it this way. And if you want to like ask employees to uh, go through certain training, you can send them an email plainly just with a link, the URL to the training. Just send a mass email with a URL, say, please complete that training and off you go. Uh, what I've seen used before as well is um, a form that's added at the beginning of the training. And instead of asking for like a work order number, uh, it asks for like a, a training ID. So what you can do is you can generate a bunch of like training ID for all the different trainings that the different um, employees have to do. And then uh, to identify uh, that they are doing this particular training, they can just write down the training ID. Um, alternatively, on the production report, you can search by training, but also what you could do is uh, you can do a search by user. So you can say, okay, I wanna see everything that Matthew did, but not necessarily um, operations report, but I, I can filter by like folder. So maybe here you have like a training folder. So you click on it, do a search, and then you would see every single, let me remove that, every single training that one particular user did. Also, what you can do is mix all of that with the training manager. So the training manager is a sort of new feature um, that came out during the summer, I believe. Um, that for every single guidebook that you build, you can list who's trained on this guidebook. Uh, so essentially, maybe you do a training for like hazardous materials. Um, and then uh, it means that once you completed it, you can do certain types of operations on the shop floor, work with dangerous materials. Uh, well, now you can go through the list of all those uh, guidebooks attached to this kind of work and then add the users who passed the trainings um, in here. And you don't have to add every single user one by one. Uh, you can just select a certain groups of users, uh, I mean here, and then it can add everybody uh, like at once. So once everybody finishes the training, give them all access and, and off you go. So I showed again the example with a quiz at the end. Let me show you something else that uh, one of our colleague at our sister company, uh, Zara, made for CMP, our, our sister company. Um, when we hire somebody new, we have to teach them on how to use VKS uh, before they go and work on the shop floor, same day, by the way. Um, so to train them on VKS, we do it through VKS. So very uh, inception-like. Um, so they go through a guidebook similar to, to this. 
Um, so it's sort of like the training plan showing how to read a work order, how to log in into VKS, how to search for a guidebook, what kind of, of buttons there is in a guidebook and what they do. Um, so new employees, they go out and mock up workstation, not directly on the shop floor. There's a computer, they go through this guidebook, just flip through the step. And again, uh, it just shows them like um, what, what to do. So they don't use it live on the shop floor, they do that before. So uh, scan your badge, and if you go in, uh, here's how you reset the fields, here's where you enter the work center code, um, like this is where you scan your barcode. I'll just go through, it explains uh, some things on the traveler uh, with the work order numbers. And after we've gone through a certain section, there will be a quiz. Let me go through, there you go, quiz. Um, so here, instead of, again, having the quiz at the end, there's a MIDI quiz like at every uh, different module. So here, which barcode will allow you to connect? And again, you can just uh, minimize this. You can just remove it completely, move it away. So is it one, two, three, uh, four, or five? Um, that would be number five, I believe. So I pick five, hit save. And if I got it right, it sends me on the next step. And, and off you go. So that was just another um, example. So I heard... I hope, I mean, uh, you learn uh, that VKS doesn't have to be only used in production, which means VKS can be used for uh, training also for, for users that are more work like in the engineering department, finance department, and um, those people still need training. Again, compliance, cybersecurity, how to use certain, certain systems. Well, you can build guidebooks uh, for them as well. So again, if you have any questions, uh, just reach out to us, um, let us know, book a demo, and it will be a pleasure to help.